When I say running warm-up, what springs to mind? Do you think of just heading out the door, jogging for 10 minutes and getting straight into your main session? Well, if so, you're not alone, but many might say that actually you should do a warm-up to get your body ready and moving before you even head out the door. So today I want to look at why we should do a warm-up, what could happen if you don't, and what that perfect warm-up should look like. I think we all know that we need a warm-up in order for our bodies to perform optimally and to reduce the chance of injury. But what does that warm-up need to look like? Well, thanks to science, it's changed dramatically over decades. I mean, the thought of doing a static stretch before going out running sends a shiver down my spine. But the idea of a warm-up is to increase the blood flow and actually warm up the muscle tissue. This will help with the overall range of motion and your mobility. And it basically warms and makes your tendons more malleable as well. So reducing the chance of any strains or sprains. This increase in temperature I mentioned can come from your muscles moving and the contraction of your muscles will generate heat and this not only allows you to head out the door feeling a bit warmer without having to wear quite so many layers, it actually reduces the viscosity of your muscles so allowing them to be able to contract harder and faster which is essential if you've got a strength or a speed session coming up. And then with an increase in temperature your heart rate will increase which will encourage more blood to move around the body and if you're doing some cardiovascular movement or anything that's raising the heart rate your breathing rate is likely to increase as well which will mean more oxygen is being delivered to those muscles to help them get ready and you've also got within the warm-up activating certain muscle groups to make sure that they're ready and firing correctly i don't know if you've ever headed out the door when you're just cold and you've not really got your muscles going you can get into a bit of a shuffle and sometimes it can be really hard to actually get out of that and get into a good running form So let's flip it on its head. What happens if you don't warm up? Or is there even a time when you can get away with it? I guess there is. I mean, on your recovery runs or a long steady run or even a build run, you can go out without a warm up. Yes, your muscles are gonna be cold and you'll have to make sure you start slow and steady, but it's totally fine. You might feel a bit sluggish and your form could suffer, especially if you're using it as a recovery run. But if you're used to doing it or you're really tight for time, then yeah, it's gonna be okay. Sometimes I must admit that I will actually, if I'm feeling really sluggish, I will start with a bit of a walk on my recovery run rather than doing anything before so I feel like I'm out the door and already moving. I reckon you don't need any more convincing us to the benefits of a warm-up. So let's look at the basic rules when you're planning that pre-run routine. Well, you want to make sure you're targeting the right muscles to get them warm and activated. And when it comes to running, yeah, that's quite a large number, but basically your legs, your torso and your shoulders included. And you need to think about the timing because, yeah, you will have time to go and get a drink and maybe nip to the loo once you've done your warm up, but you don't want to sit down for half an hour as you're going to lose all of those benefits. And the faster and shorter that main set is going to be, the actual longer and more thorough your warm up needs to be. And you want to be kind to your body, so make sure you ease into it gently. The whole point of the warm up is to get your body ready in a gradual fashion. And remember, it is still just a warm up, it's not the workout itself, so you don't want to tie yourself out too much. Onto the warm up itself, and I'm going to give you ideas of movements, but ultimately you've got to work out what is best for you, your body, and the run session you've got coming up. And like we've covered, it's about warming up your body, getting it moving through a decent range of motion, and getting those muscles nice and warm as well. So, an exercise that will basically tick all of those boxes to get started is the lunge. Now, that might sound a bit dramatic, but you want to build into this. So, make sure you start with a really nice small lunge, keeping it really shallow, so not dropping down too far. So, stepping forwards with one leg, coming back to the center forwards with the other leg back to the center and then actually stepping back so you're still in the lunge position but you're just approaching it from a different angle do that with both legs as well and then you can start to add in diagonal and sideways movements and start to go deeper as your body warms up working on single leg activity will also challenge your core but those smaller muscles that are essential for being activated ahead of running efficiently and the single leg drill is perfect for that so standing on one leg you're going to bring your knee up we're using your own activation to start with and once it gets to around 90 degrees you then put your hands around your knee and pull it towards you but make sure you're pulling your knee towards your body not the other way around so you need to make sure that you're remaining nice and upright and you can do that a few times on either leg and then once you've got into that movement you, next time you bring your leg up you can actually guide it out towards you almost doing that open gate exercise you'll see footballers quite often doing and it'll just help to really mobilize the groin area 
I mentioned that your trunk also needs to be warm and it's something that maybe isn't always thought about but this exercise will start to activate it but just be cautious if you do have any back problems probably one to avoid so stand with your feet a bit wider than hip width apart and put your arms out in a big star position and you're going to take your opposite hand down towards your opposite shin or ankle and obviously don't push it to start with if that's just down to your knee that's totally fine come back up to the standing star position drop back down to the opposite side so you'll also be getting a bit of a gentle stretch on the backs of your hamstrings as well as getting that rotation through your core. An optional addition that will wake up your glutes is the glute bridge. It's a pretty standard exercise but it does involve you lying down on the floor with your knees bent and your feet flat on the ground and you're simply from that position going to squeeze your glutes and drive your hips up towards the sky or the ceiling making sure you do it nice and controlled and you reach full extension and you lower back down if you want to make it a little bit more taxing then you can move it onto single leg but just to be aware that keep an eye on your hips staying level and making sure you've got good form with that now is the time to include any specific activation work you might have, whether that's for glutes or calf raises or something along those lines. But I'm not going to go into detail as that's very much personal and depends what your body requires. And after that, it's time to start to get a little bit more active. So we're going to get the heart rate up a bit higher and that movement a bit more vigorous. So it's time to introduce leg swings. And you've got quite a few varieties here. You can simply swing your legs forwards and backwards. You can swing across your body. You can do them supported to start with. You can also opt to do it unsupported. So you're then going to be having to activate your core and your glute on the standing leg moving your arms as well so it'll help to raise that heart rate a little bit further i reckon by now you're going to be desperate to head out the door so i'm going to stop there but it doesn't mean you're ready to head out and run a 400 meter rep flat out if you do have a meaty session coming up you're still going to need to ease into it with a jog around 15 minutes if you include drills normally then you want to pop them in there finish with some strides and then you'll be ready to go talking of which i think it's time i went for a run but before i do make sure you hit that like button and subscribe